Jesus made me more like you. As I pray, Jesus made me more like you. As I pray.
Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Eternal King of glory and everlasting God, we are very grateful. Thank you very much because you have prepared us for what is to happen next. Great things will happen to us. Amen. Young and old, great things will happen to us. Amen. The word of God will penetrate our soul and our spirit and it will turn us around Amen. for your glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, because you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. I welcome you to our Bible study tonight. We just finished um, a three-day crusade in Lagos. It was a great time. Were you there? Yes. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And the attendance is very encouraging. And then the response to the altar call, it was like I used to say, wonderful. Say that with me. Wonderful. And then the people that received miracles, did you hear testimonies? Yes. And I pray that those things will abide in Jesus' name. Yes. We now need to be very serious about the follow up. All those that came to know the Lord, we're praying that uh, God will integrate there with the body of Christ, the church in Jesus' name. Amen. And as the Lord is blessing them, He'll be blessing uh, you too in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, welcome to the Bible study tonight. The Lord is going to open our eyes to wonderful things in His Word. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for our Bible study. Thank you for those who are coming for the first time today. Thank you for the old timers, our fathers in the Lord and mothers in the Lord, our overseers and our pastors and workers and all the leaders and all our members. We're asking Lord tonight to open our eyes to behold great deep things in your word in Jesus' name. I will pray that this Bible study will do us good, will make us increase in knowledge increase in experience it increase in our focus increase in our dedication and devotion to the lord in jesus name once again expound your word to everyone in jesus mighty name we pray god bless you consider we're coming to john chapter 8 for the benefit of those who are coming to the bible study probably for the first time we're going through a series and the series is found in the Gospel according to St. John. We'll be coming from chapter 1. We normally study from chapter to chapter and from verse to verse. And tonight we're in John chapter 8 reading from verse 12. And we'll be looking at all the verses that go through until verse 30. I'm just going to read a few verses now. We're coming to John 8 verse 12. Then Jesus spake again unto them. When he says he spoke again unto them, if you were here last week, you remember that Jesus Christ was teaching. He was teaching in the temple. And then some people, Pharisees and scribes, interrupted the teaching. They brought somebody that they said they called committing sin. And uh, they wanted to know whether to stone the woman or not. But Jesus said, He that has no sin among them shall cast the first stone. And eventually they went out one by one. And the mercy of Jesus came to that woman. The love of God came to that woman. And salvation came to that woman. Because Jesus said, Neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. That transferred grace into our life. And grace is transferred into your life. And the love of God was shown to her. And the love of God is shown to you in Jesus' name. Now when it says in verse 12, Then speak Jesus again. Remember, they interrupted him. Now he is going to teach the people. Continue the teaching. He was giving to the people. He now says in verse 12, Then speak Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He wasn't just talking to the woman. He was talking to his congregation. 
the people he had been teaching look at verse 2 and early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them that's what he was doing before the interruption came and after the divine intervention you now resumed again teaching the people and so when he had said that you remember the Pharisees and the scribes that brought that woman they stayed they were still there eventually they went out one by one yes but then they now joined the congregation look at verse 13 the Pharisees therefore said unto him that there is witness the record of thyself the record is not true you see they were not able to catch him when they brought uh, that woman but now they, they were listening to him when he said I am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness then they picked him up on that and he said you are bearing witness of yourself and because you are bearing witness of yourself your record is not true then he explained things to them and he spoke to them about God about the Father about heaven and about eternity but look at verse 27 it says they understood not that he spoke to them of the Father they didn't understand the word of God they listened they heard yet they didn't understand what didn't they understand look at verse 43 in verse 43 why do ye not understand my speech even because ye cannot hear my word here the Pharisees and the Jews you see they were always present in the public ministry of Jesus Christ they were always there you were read in verse 13 that the Pharisees were there and we read in verse 22 then said the Jews will he kill himself you know the Jews were there the Pharisees were there they followed him around they saw him they heard him, they questioned him, they spoke to him, and yet they didn't understand the word they were hearing. It's unfortunate when somebody is hearing the word of God week after week and day after day in the temple, in the synagogue, on the street, everywhere, he's hearing the word and yet he does not understand. I was surprised the prophet of old had spoken about them, that their mind would be like that. Isaiah chapter 44, reading here from verse 18, Isaiah chapter 44, and we're reading from verse 18, the prophet had seen that ahead of time, that this will be their attitude, this will be their condition. It was their condition in the past, it was still their condition now at the time of Jesus, and Isaiah chapter 44 verse 18, they have not known nor understood. They didn't know God and they didn't understand how to know God. He spoke about repentance, they didn't understand. He spoke about faith, they didn't understand. He spoke about seeking the Lord, they didn't understand. He spoke about the fact that he would be going back to heaven and if they were not born again, if they were not saved, they would not be able to come to where he was going and yet they didn't know, neither did they understand, for he has shot their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand. And look at Matthew chapter 13. In Matthew chapter 13, talking about these people always hearing, not understanding, always listening, not understanding, always following Jesus and yet not understanding. Why that? How did that happen to them? How could that happen to anybody today that they hear about salvation for so many times, yet they don't understand? It's about witness, about sanctification, so many times, and yet they do not understand. It's about the power to witness the power of the Holy Ghost, yet they do not understand. It's about heaven and how to prepare and get to heaven. And it's over and over, and yet they do not understand. Matthew chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 14. It says in Matthew 13, verse 14, look at this, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, by hearing you shall hear, and yet shall not understand. You see that? By hearing you shall hear, listening you shall listen, and uh, learning you shall learn, but shall not understand, and see you shall see, but shall not perceive. 
not perceive means you are not to understand why. Look at verse 15. The base people's heart is what grows. It's not a problem on the edge. It's not a problem of the vocabulary of Jesus Christ. His vocabulary is what simple. His words were simple. His words were pointed, pointed and direct. And yet it says something was wrong with their heart. For these people's heart is what grows. Their ears are of hearing. And their eyes tell what follows them. They are closed. They close their eyes. The light was shining. Jesus Christ, the light of the world. And it says that the light of the world, when the sun is shining, and yet somebody closes his eyes, he does not want to see. Because of that, he will not see. It says their eyes, they are closed. Less than any time, they shall see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and shall be converted, and I should heal them. Do you know that that condition had been there long, long before that time? Look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 7. And we're reading from verse 25. When Moses came to the people so that he could deliver them. Again, they didn't understand. They didn't understand. And even though the deliverer was very near, yet they wouldn't understand. It was like that long, long ago with them. Acts chapter 7 verse 25. For he supposed his brethren would have understood how God, how that God by his son would deliver them. But, tell me out loud, they understood not. That's why they spent extra 40 years in Egypt before they ever went out of Egypt. Because the deliverer came and they didn't understand. The deliverer came, they didn't understand. And if it happens like that today, somebody can go on suffering and yet salvation is available. Somebody goes on suffering, healing is available. Somebody goes on suffering and yet the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. In Second Peter chapter 2, Second Peter chapter 2, here we're reading from verse 12. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 12, but these as natural brute beasts may to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not. That's the problem of the Pharisees, the problem of the scribes, they didn't understand Jesus Christ and they refer to what he said as blasphemy. They refer to what he said as error, as false. They refer to what he said as coming from the Elzebub and coming from the devil because they didn't understand. Therefore they opposed, therefore they argued, therefore they condemned, therefore they judged what they didn't understand. Look at verse 17. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. They converse with Jesus, but they are not converted by Jesus. Christ is the light of the world. The light shone brightly. His words were easy to understand, but the Pharisees had a problem in their heart, and their heart could not receive, could not accept the word of God. You see, that's the problem with people who come with a kind of clouded heart, darkened heart, a kind of ignorant heart, a kind of a hard heart that will not submit to the word of God. They may understand all the verses we're reading. They understand what they heard, but their heart is not there. Therefore, they are not yielding their heart to the Lord. I pray that will not happen to you. You will hear, you will understand. You will understand, you will believe. And to believe the word of God, it will work mightily in your heart, in your life, in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles chapter 7, reading from verse 51. Acts of the Apostles chapter 7. From the spirit of one is to net and uncircumcised in heart. You see that? Uncircumcised in heart. Yes, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. They were very religious. Those Pharisees, that's why they were there every time. They will not miss any of the meetings of Jesus Christ, they will not miss any of the preaching points and preaching places of Jesus Christ. they'll be there. Anywhere Jesus was teaching, they will be there. But their hearts rebelled against God. Their hearts rebelled against Christ. Their hearts rebelled against the truth. Their hearts rebelled against their own salvation. Their hearts rebelled against heaven and against revelation. Their hearts rebelled against their own eternal happiness. They used 
use religion to work against themselves. They use their traditions to work against themselves. They use their stubbornness to work against themselves. And they use their evil intention to work against themselves. Tonight we are looking at this message, John chapter 8, came from the 12 to the 13. The subject is the life preaching truth of Christ, the light. The life preaching truth of Christ, the light. There are three things we are looking at as we divide the passage to three parts. Number one, walking in the light of a saving truth. The truth of Jesus saves is the truth of the gospel. It's the truth of the good news. It's the truth of heaven. It's the very truth of God. The truth that says, walking in the light of sin truth. Point number two, warning for the lost without his sin truth. Warning for the lost without his sin truth. The lost who are lost in religion. Somebody can be lost in religion. The lost who are lost in Denominationalism. Somebody can be lost in denomination. The lost who are lost in tradition. Somebody can be lost in tradition. The lost who are lost in religion. They were lost in religion. The eat and the saving truth. Warning for them. Warning for the lost. Warning for you. Warning for us. Who are lost in Christendom. If they go to church, they are lost. They read the Bible, they are lost. They love the denomination, they are lost. And they practice whatever the kind of a celebration, worship, and get the lost warning in for the lost without saving truth. Point number three, the worthiness of the Lord, our sustaining truth. The worthiness of the Lord, our sustaining truth. Number one, we're looking at um, walking in the light of the saving truth. I'm reading now from chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 12. Then speak Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Not I was, not I will be at the present time. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. You know what he's talking about here? He that followeth me, number one, he's talking to his disciples who have left everything and they were following him. He's talking to those disciples that we can call old members of the church. And then he's also talking to the new convert, the one that just got salvation in verse 11. The one that just got salvation a few days ago and he said, Neither do I condemn you. Condemnation is gone. You have passed from death unto life. Now you are born again. Now your sins are forgiven. Now you are justified. And it happened just a few moments ago. It happened just a few days ago. And now it says you are following your new comfort. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let's come to verse 13. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. You understand what they're saying? They say, somebody meets you and says, Oh, praise the Lord, I am a trader. And somebody says, because he said that, then this record is not true. Why not true? Somebody approaches and says, praise the Lord, you know, I got a job now. I am a teacher. And uh, you say, because you are bearing witness of yourself, then your witness is not true. No, it is true. Somebody says, I'm an engineer. That, that's what he is. And then he tells you, and Jesus Christ said, I am. Just like you can say, I am a man. I am a woman. I'm a boy. I'm a girl. Just like you can say, I'm a student. I'm a teacher. Just like you can say, I'm a worker. I'm a leader. And it is true because that is who you are. And Jesus Christ now said, I am the light of the world. Look at these people. Any of them could have come and said, I am a Pharisee. And they will say, because you'll be a witness of yourself, you're a Pharisee, therefore your witness is not true. Of course it's true. 
I'm a scribe. I'm a Sadducee. I am an Israelite. I'm a Nigerian. I'm a, I'm a Ghanaian. I am an African. I'm an American. And if that is true, then that is true. You cannot say because he said so about himself, then that is not true. But that's the reasoning. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, that bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I be a record of myself, yet, tell me, my record is true. It's always true. It's the faithful one. He always told the truth. He never told a lie. He said, my record is true, for I know where, for I know whence I came from, and whither I go. But ye cannot tell whence I come, and whither I go. Except I tell you, except I tell you, and I'm trying to help you so that you'll know, I came from the Father. I came from heaven. After all, one of those Pharisees came to him and said, We know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do this because that thou doest except God be with him. Look at them not pretending as if they didn't know. It says in verse 15, He judge after the flesh. I judge no man. Yet if I judge, yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I and my father that search me. He is always referring to the Heavenly Father, always referring to God as his father. It is also written in your Lord that the testimony of two men is true. Verse 18, I am one, a witness of myself, and the father that sent me beareth witness of me. You see, what they wanted them to do was that they will understand about him being the light. You know, about Jesus Christ being the light, what they were saying was bearing witness of himself, and therefore his witness was not true. Another person had one witness about him. John chapter 1, verse 9. John chapter 1, verse 9. That was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. That, that was the true light. John the, the John the Baptist, very witness, very record that Jesus Christ is the light. That was the true light that lighted every man that cometh into the world. It was a light to everyone. Even to the Pharisees, it was to be the light. And even to the Jews was to be the light. And to all the Gentiles, it was to be the light. And the uh, prophecy had uh, spoken about that before. Look at Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, reading from verse 15. Matthew chapter 4, verse 15. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the Red of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee, of the Gentiles, of the Gentiles. See this now, the people which sat in darkness saw great light, those are the Gentiles, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung forth. And what's the light from that time Jesus began to speak and to say, Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He knew the kingdom, he knew the kingdom, he was the king of the kingdom, and was telling and showing them the light, how they could enter into the kingdom. In fact, as we look at the last book of the Old Testament, the last book of the Old Testament, what's the last book of the Old Testament now? Malachi chapter 4, Malachi chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 2. You see what the scripture said about him. But unto you that fear the name, that fear my name, shall the Son of Righteousness, S-U-N, capital S, the Son of Righteousness. What's he saying there? As the natural sun in the sky gives light to the whole world, so this Jesus Christ, the Son of Righteousness, will be the light of righteousness to the whole world. It says the Son of Righteousness arise him in his wings, and he shall go forth and grow up as calves of the soul. It says that there is the sun, the rays of the sun, and the beam of the sun, and the hope, and the love, and the joy, and the salvation, and the forgiveness, and the mercy coming from Jesus Christ will bring life eternal to these people. But you see them, instead of walking 
sinner in the light. They were waging war against light. They argued. They disagreed. They opposed him. They rejected the light. They forged the light. Eventually they crucified him. And they perished eventually. And now they suffer in eternal darkness. But let's come to John chapter 8. And let's see what the Lord is telling us to do. That we separate ourselves from those Pharisees. Separate ourselves from those scribes. Separate ourselves from those doubters. And those people that were argumentative. And let us see what he wants us to do. He says, then speak Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Walk in the light. I'll walk in the light. I'll not walk in darkness. I said, I will not walk in darkness. I will not walk in darkness in Jesus' name. His light is always shining. There's no darkness in him at all. Because God is light. And Christ is light. It tells us in John chapter 12, verse 35. John chapter 12, verse 35. It says that Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. You understand? Yet a little while. He knew he was going to the cross to die. And he said, Now you see me physically. You can ask any question now. And I can show you the way of salvation now. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And this is your opportunity. Why I'm still with you. That's why I said, Yet a little while. It's the light with you. Walk while ye have the light. Less darkness come upon you, for he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. Look at verse 46. In verse 46, I am and come a light into the world. I'm come a light into the world. He came to enlighten us. He came to show us the way. He came to show light in our heart. He came to show light in the face of the Father. And he came to show us the way that leads to heaven. That's why he said, I am come a light into the world. But whosoever, whosoever, whosoever believeth in me should not abide in darkness. Idolatry is referred to as darkness. Sinfulness is referred to as darkness. Occultism is darkness. And all the traditions of the world that will not get anybody saved is darkness. Religion that doesn't save, all that is darkness. And it says, when you have Jesus Christ, you abandon the darkness of idolatry. The darkness of occultism and the darkness of tradition and the darkness of a heathenic or pagan culture. And now you walk in the light. Thank God I see people walking in the light today. You'll walk in the light. And the light will be keep on and shining brighter and brighter in your life in Jesus' name. Uh, there are neighbors around you that are still walking in darkness. And I pray that your, that your light will so shine that they will see your good works and they will glorify your Father who is in heaven in Jesus' name. In Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 8, Ephesians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 8. Ephesians chapter 5, and we're reading from verse, reading from verse 8. It says, for ye were sometimes darkness. It's talking about the past now. Like that woman they brought to Jesus and he interrupted his teaching because he said, we caught her in this particular sin. That was darkness. Sin, sinfulness is darkness. But now she came to the light. And Jesus could have said, you were in the past in darkness, but you are no more in darkness. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Walk as children of light. And it says, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. You know what that means? You are in your office and then they want to have a deal to sign this or to sign that and they want to commit crime. They want to do some fraudulent things and then you say, is this acceptable 
you unto the Lord. Or it is that you are in your house and there is, uh, you know, a woman, a lady that is making herself cheap and is presenting herself to you that you do this, you ask, is this acceptable unto the Lord? You're selling in the market, that's the light. Because everything you do now, you bring to the light. Your marketing, you bring to the light. And your relationships will bring to the light. Your interaction with people, you bring to the light. Your education, you bring to the light because now you have to walk in the light. And you are, you know, you are selling. You know, somebody says, "I sold that for so much," and you know that that is too high. You know that this is the real price, and then it says, "But you know, you are going to make a great gain if you do it this way or that way." You find out, you prove to yourself what is acceptable unto the Lord. You want to get married, don't do it in that do it in the light. You want to have a children, don't do it in the dark. Do it in the light. That is whatever method you are using, whatever you are seeing, it should be something you can come to the church and say, praise the Lord. This is what I did. This is where I go. If you cannot say that, you are not proving what you are doing to be acceptable unto the Lord. Look at verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Many people will say, I did this way, I did that, I got it that way, I got it that way. All their evil things. It says, don't do that. Something you have to cover up. Something you have to tell one lie to cover another lie. Something you have to adjust to, you know, so they will not touch you. That's darkness. That's darkness. But if you're a real child of God, it says you will not have fellowship with the fruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. You know, something has happened. And you know that the truth is this. You know that, uh, you know, the coordinator might ask, the regional Versailles might ask, or the city of Versailles might ask, and you, you guess, who can he ask? Okay, he might ask so and so and so and so and so and so. And then you go to those people and say, well, should in case they happen to ask you about this and about this, this is what we told him, and this is what we must tell him. This is what we told her, this is what we must tell her. That's darkness. That's darkness. Because you are covering up sin, you are covering up darkness, or another shade, another shield of darkness, but it says, no, have no fellowship with those that have unfruitful works of darkness. It says, for it's a shame, even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret, but all things are reproved, all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever does make manifest is the light. It's not challenging challenging you and challenging me, challenging us. Look at verse 14, wherefore he says, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and tell me, tell me out loud, and Christ shall give the light. You know, some people don't like the light of Christ. They like to, you know, be in a corner somewhere doing something that is in darkness. They want to be in a corner somewhere doing something that is covered up. They want to be in a corner somewhere doing something that nobody will know. But you know, God knows. God knows. And judgment will come if you don't repent. That's why he says, wake up and understand that if you walk in the light, then you walk into eternity. But if you walk in darkness, that's a terrible thing. Sienna, I pray you'll walk in the light. In Romans, Romans chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 11. Romans chapter 13, and we're reading from verse 11. In Romans chapter 13, verse 11, it's still telling us about darkness and light. It says, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe the night is past spent and the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off. What are we casting off? I said, what are we casting off? Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, the practice of darkness, the principle of darkness, and all the practices of darkness, all the occultism, cast them off. All the tradition, cast them off. And all the worldly ways of darkness, you know, cover it up. Don't tell anybody to know that I'm the one that did this and that this is what I did. He said, cast that off and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk how? I said, let us walk how? You see, there are people that are dishonest, 
that's, that, that's darkness. There are people who are faithful. That's darkness. There are people who are shady. That's darkness. There are people who are fraudulent. That's darkness. The people that are I in mean, error. That's darkness. The people that are in deception. That's darkness. It says, now let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Like you put on your dress, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the light shine around you. The secrecy of doing this, the secrecy of going there, nobody will know this. The secrecy of drinking is secret. The secrecy of smoking marijuana or secret is secret. The secrecy of the pill for in and you know taking money that doesn't belong to you. It says let all these secret things stop because that's the way of the people that walk in darkness and the secrecy they must not know this, they must not know this, but I'm doing this because of this, I'm reacting to this, I'm reacting to that. It said all that secrecy, let it stop. It will stop. I said it will stop. Whatever the daughter does, mommy should not do this. Tell mommy. Why should not mommy? Whatever the son is doing, uh, you know, daddy must not know this. Why not? Tell daddy. Even if you are wrong, they will, you know, rebuke you and correct you and put you in the path of righteousness. Members of the church are doing something. Uh, the correct pastor must not, not know this. Why? Let them know. Bring your light to the open and walk in the light. Don't be like a Pharisee. And don't be like a Sadducee, like all those Christ. And they'll come suspiciously. They'll come in a subtle way. They'll come in a secret way. And then they'll throw a bait and say, We know that we're a teacher come from God. Now tell us about this. And Jesus will see through all the facts. And Jesus will see through all the superficial chances. Why are you tempting me? Look at this and look at this. Good enough is telling us now. Because if you wait until eternity before you discover the truth, at that time it will be too late to repent. But thank God there's repentance today. And thank God there's restoration today. And thank God the mercy of God is available today. That's why it says, but put ye on the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision, make not provision for the flesh. Make not provision for the flesh. Make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lost thereof. You'll be free. You'll walk in the light. And the grace of Jesus Christ will become abundant in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Now we're coming to point number two. Warning for the lost without a saving truth. Warning for the lost without a saving truth. Jesus Christ was very plain and Jesus Christ was very clear as he spoke to the people. I'm coming to John chapter 8 verse 19. Look at verse 19. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus and such, ye neither know me nor my father. For if ye had known me, ye would have known my father also. This word speak Jesus in the treasury, as he taught in the temple. Remember, I see in the temple, as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him. Tell me. I can't hear you. Let me just speak aloud. His hour was not yet come. We met that before because you know that's always coming up and coming up and coming up. There are people tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. See, because his time was not yet, there are some people, they call themselves believers. They are hide themselves in the house. They are hide themselves in a dungeon somewhere. They cannot go out. They cannot do this or do that. And I'm asking them why. So they say because, you know, they see now it's very dangerous. This kind of boys and this kind of girls are out there. And this danger is out there and this danger is out there but God is watching over you I said what well, God is watching over you and until your time comes nobody can lay hands on you all those people with the occult power their tradition whatever it is and their paths of darkness may be there light will shine around you 
God will build a fence around you and nothing will ever touch you in Jesus' name. You know, I cannot go to Bible study in the night. Why not? Because outside there, I don't know what is going to happen. Nothing will happen except good. Nothing will happen except the favor of God. Except the protection of God. Be free and live your life. Other people say, you know, I've got this uh, miracle. I cannot give testimony. But personal, immediately I give testimony. Somebody there, they'll pick it up and then they will turn the testimony around. Never. Somebody shout, never. It will not happen to you in Jesus' name. Your life is secured. Your family is secured. It will watch over you. Fear not, I will be with you. Fear not, I will help you. Fear not, I will protect you. He that touches you touches the apple of the eye of the Lord. With long life will it satisfy you. I'll see you next time. I'll see you next year. You are going to live long. We need to have the confidence that anywhere we go, since we're in the center of the will of God and the Lord is going with us, you can go to the north, you can go to the south. You can go to the east, you can go to the west because his time was not yet, his hour was not yet come. Verse 21, then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way and ye shall seek me and shall die in your sins and whither I go ye cannot come he was talking about going to heaven he was going back to the father and he was going to finish his assignment and finish his work and yet they didn't understand and then look at verse 22 then said the Jews will he kill himself because he said whither I go ye cannot come and he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. That's simple to understand. You are from the earth. Your daddy, your mommy was earth here when you were born. I am from above. I came from heaven. Ye are of this world. Look at where you are born. That's of the world. But look at where I came from. I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, Ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not, that I am he, he shall die in your sins. That is, I'm the Savior. If you don't believe that I'm he, you're going to die without salvation. I am your healer. If you don't believe that I am he, you're going to die of your sickness. I am the deliverer. If you don't believe that I'm the deliverer, you're going to die in your oppression. I am the sanctifier. I am the one that makes holy. If you don't believe that I am he, you're going to die without holy. And without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. That's what was said. Like, I am He, the Savior. I am He, the Christ. I am He, the Messiah. I am He, the one that brought the grace of God from heaven to everyone. You can receive whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But if you don't believe that I am He, He shall die in your sins. Then say, Give unto Him. Who art thou? Who art thou? He had been telling them. sent me is true and I speak to the world those things which I have heard feel. look at verse 27 and they understood not that you speak to them of the father they understood 
should not that is speak to them of the Father. Can you imagine this, how these people were? The condition of their heart, the condition of their mind, the condition of their receptivity. Look at this. He taught them in the temple, and yet they understood not. He heard the best teacher that ever lived, the Lord Jesus Christ, yet they understood not. He taught the most important subject, the essential subject for eternity, that will help them to get to heaven, yet they understood not. The only Savior, greater than angels, greater than all men, stood before them and revealed God to them, revealed the Heavenly Father to them, and the Bible says, they understood not. He spoke to win them. They understood not. He spoke to warn them. They understood not. He spoke to woo them. They understood not. He watched them dying in their sin. He said, if you don't believe the salvation abroad, eternal life abroad, and the grace of God abroad, if you don't believe in the mercy, the compassion abroad, if you don't believe in the message of the gospel, the good news that is going to lead you out of sin, out of salvation, if you don't believe that, your sin. They were going to die in ignorance. They didn't understand. They are going to die in unbelief. They didn't understand. They were going to die in darkness. And yet, the Bible says they understood not. He wants them of perishing. He wants them of missing heaven. He wants them of going to hell. Look at verse 21. Verse 21. Then Jesus said, Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall see me, and shall die in your sins. That if you die as sinners, you are lost forever. And you are going to go to hell if you die in sin. And then he says in that verse 21, whither I go, where was he going? I said, where was he going? In my father's house are many mansions. If it were so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for, for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. He will come again. And take you unto myself, so that where I am, there ye may be also. They didn't understand. They didn't understand. He said, When I go, he is going to heaven. Ye cannot come. Without salvation, ye cannot come. Without sanctification, ye cannot come. Without holiness, ye cannot come. Without the grace of God, the forgiveness of God, redemption of God, ye cannot come. And then he goes on to say, Look at verse 22. In verse 22, Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he said, Whither I go, ye cannot. He watched them and he spoke clearly, he spoke directly, he spoke pointedly of their, uh, of their destiny and yet they didn't understand. Uh, Jesus Christ now made it very clear to them. Look at verse 44. In verse 44, ye of your father the devil and the laws of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And I put not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Look at that. He was very clear, very clear, very pointed, very pungent, very direct. And he said, you have your father, the devil. And yet, even though he spoke so clearly, it says, they understood not. They understood earthly knowledge, earthly matters earthly lessons, earthly circumstances, yet they do not understand essential, eternal truth. I pray you will understand. I said, I pray you will understand. What's the good if you understand every subject matter in school, every subject matter in college, every subject matter in uh, your professional work, yet you don't understand the simple way that leads to heaven. You understand? The deep things Geology and the deep things of astrology, and you understand the great thing of the sea, of the sky, and of the mountain, and of the forest, and everything. And yet, the simple message of being born again, you don't care to understand. All that let will fail you, all that now you'll be buried with you when you die. But the only thing that will take you to heaven, being born again, is that you can be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. The knowledge that will take you to heaven, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You investigate everything, you study everything, you buy books, you buy 
you know, whatever materials to study this and study this and study that until you become an expert in those subject areas. And those subject areas will only follow you and help you until the grave, until you die. After you are dead, all that knowledge now is useless. And the only knowledge that will carry you to heaven, to eternity, is this knowledge of who Jesus is, of the Savior, and of the sanctifier, of the one that brings you grace, of the one that takes away your sin, of the one that links you with the Father and reconciles you with the Almighty God. And you don't have the knowledge of that in eternity of be of all men, the most miserable, and all those degrees. I got degree in this, I got degree in this, I got degree in that, and then no understanding of salvation. What are you going to do with them when you die? I pray you'll be wise in Jesus' name. to be restored. We're praying for you. We want you to be sanctified. We're praying. We want you to get to heaven. And while the people of God agree together as touching anything that we're asked, and it is easy for you to get saved. But if you draw back, if you pull back, I pray you'll not pull back. But you see, the time comes when it will be too late. That's why it said in John chapter 7 verse 34, You shall seek me and shall not find me. When and where I am, see there, ye cannot come. Where he's going, thank God I'll be there. I said, thank God I'll be there. Look at John chapter 3. He warned them. John chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 18. In verse 18 it says, He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The only begotten Son of God. You know how foolish it would be for anybody to study the Bible, study the Bible, study the Bible, and not stop and say, well, I've had enough. I've studied enough. Now is the time to repent. Now is the time to believe and make a decisive act and decide right there. I will still study later, but I need to, this one that I understand, that Jesus is Savior. This one that I understand, that if I'm not saved, I will perish forever. I want to make use of this knowledge. I want to be saved at this time. And then you close the deal. You've turned away from sin. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You can point to the place. You can point to the day. You can point to the time. When you make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. And then you say, praise the Lord. I'm on my way to heaven. I can tell you where I was saved. I can tell you when I was saved. I can tell you the place where I was saved. And I can tell you, praise the Lord. I'm on my way to heaven. Somebody there, praise the Lord. I'm on my way to heaven. Somebody there, tell me out aloud. Because you believe and you remember the day and you remember the time when you gave your life to the Lord. And then whatever happens, you know, if anything happens now, I'll be up there. I said I'll be up there. Look at verse 36, John chapter 3, verse 36. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. Look at that. And you can do that today if you've not done it yet. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The wrath of God abideth on him. I pray the favor of God will abide on you. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, we're looking at verse 1. Hebrews chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 1. It says, therefore we ought to give the more honest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. We need to give the more honest heed to the message of salvation. 
to the message of sanctification, to the message of holiness without which no man shall say the Lord, to the message of making a way right with God when you bring your gift to the altar. And remember that somebody has ought against you. You leave your gift right there at the altar and then you go to the one and apologize when you said to then you come back. And we need to give the more honesty to the message of God that we are hearing. So we are not just hearing and storing up knowledge, not acting on them, just hearing and storing up knowledge and not believing in the Lord, just uh, hearing and storing up knowledge and not taking a decisive step. It says, uh, therefore, we ought to give the more honesty to the things which we have heard, lest at any time, any time, at any time, we should let them sleep. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Look at that. How shall we escape judgment? How shall we escape perdition? How shall we escape punishment in eternity? How shall we escape the judgment of God if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? I pray you will not reject, you will not neglect, and you will not stubbornly uh, thrust uh, salvation aside. And then when you die, where is salvation? I heard about here, but I couldn't decide. Ah, it will be too late at that time. And then there will be punishment, eternal punishment. I pray you will decide today. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 26. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully, like the Pharisees, they knew that this is a Savior. They knew that this is a great miracle worker. They knew this is the Redeemer, the Deliverer. But all the same, they rejected deliberately. For if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. The final sacrifice has been made. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. And any other sin we deal without Jesus Christ cannot bring us salvation. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fair indignation, which shall devour the adversaries like the Pharisees. He that despised Moses' Lord died without mercy on the two or three witnesses of how much sorrow punishment, of how much greater punishment, of how much fear, fiercer judgment, of how much sorrow punishment, suppose him shall he be thought worthy, who has trodden underfoot the Son of God, and has counted the blood of the covenant where we they were sanctified an unholy sin, and has not despite of the Spirit of grace. For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, says the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Verse 31. Can we read that together? One, two, three, go. Once again. Finally. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of, a, of the living God. That was the warning they should have heeded, but they didn't heed the warning. Many of those Pharisees died without salvation. Many of those scribes died without salvation. But thank God you don't have to die without salvation. Salvation is available. Salvation is free. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's no doubt about it because the Lord will fulfill his word. We're coming to we're coming to point number three now. The worthiness of the Lord, our sustaining truth. The worthiness of the Lord, our sustaining truth. We're coming to John chapter 8, verse 28. John chapter 8, verse 28. Jesus said unto them, Ye have the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am He. Then shall he, ye know, I am He, He the Savior, I am He, He the Sanctifier, I am He, He the Final Sacrifice, I am He, He the Shepherd, I am He, He the Deliverer, I am He, the Mediator between God and man. When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then will ye know, then shall ye know that I am He. 
me and that I do nothing of myself but as my father has taught me I speak these things he that sent me is with me the father has not left me alone for I do how often always things that please him uh, let's look at what Jesus is saying he's saying when he has lifted up the son of man what does that mean to lift up the son of man we're looking at chapter 12 of John John chapter 12 verse 32 and I if I be lifted up from the earth shall draw all men unto me stop here for a moment you know many people sometimes when they talk about lift him up lift him up what they mean in their mind is that you know exalt him lift him up that's all right that's all right but what jesus said when he said when i'm lifted up i start to again i if i lifted up the earth will draw all men unto me this is said tell me signify what death it should die it's talking about being lifted up on the cross lifted up on the cross it says in a verse 34 in verse 34 when the people when uh, then the people answered him with heard out of the law that christ abided forever and how says thou the son of man must be lifted up who is this son of man then jesus said unto them yet a little while is the light with you walk while ye have the light lest darkness come upon you for he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth while ye have the light believe in the light that ye may be the children of light he spoke about his um, crucifixion come back to john chapter 8 reading from verse 28 you see the worthiness of christ the character of christ the righteousness of christ the fact that in his life he pleased the father every time in all things when you have lifted up the son of man then shall you know that i am he and that i do nothing of myself if you could say that if you could say that from morning till evening i do nothing of myself i just don't you're not just you know jumping into conclusion jumping into action and leaping and you know running helter skelter and not hearing from the father if you're a real child of god jesus abides in you and it's not about to just do anything say anything act anyhow or do whatever without knowing will this please the father will this honor the father will this glorify the father is this the reason why i'm sent into the world that's why he said i do not sin of myself but as my father has taught me all these teachings were receiving from the word of god all that the spirit of god is revealing to us from the father are we taking that into consideration you want to get married are you taking it into consideration and you want to get to a job are you taking that into consideration you want to uh, have a relationship you know a friend or whatever do you take the teaching of the word of god into consideration you're traveling out you want to leave town to go and stay in another place where you'll not hear the word of god anymore are you taking the word of god you are learning into consideration husband and wife do you take the word of god into consideration something has happened and this thing you know really hits you and it's like you know, you're boiling inside and now you're going to act do you remember the word of god you have learned before you do anything it says i do nothing of myself but as my father has taught me i speak these things he that sent me is with me the father has not let me alone for i do always i pray that grace will be upon every one of us for i do always i do always i do always those things that please him and let us see the the tenor of the life of the lord jesus christ john chapter 5 john chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 19 in verse 19 then answered jesus and said unto them verily verily i say unto you the son can do nothing of himself but what he said the father do look at that look at that jesus christ he said 
I don't just jump into anything. I don't just jump into any action. I don't just do anything because it's habitual. You know, there's some people, they do things, they, don't, they cannot even explain anymore now. Uh, they did it some time ago, it was a mistake. They did it again, it was a mistake. And now it has become the habit. They just do it now. Jesus said, I don't, I don't act like that. I don't behave like that. I listen to my father. I see what to glorify my father. I see what the father is doing. The son can do nothing of himself. But what you see the father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the son. Likewise, look at verse 30. I, I can of my own self do nothing. It says, I don't say that's a small thing. I don't I need to involve my father in this. This is a little thing. I don't need to involve him. So they said, I can of my own self nothing. I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will. Look at Jesus. I seek not my own will. The only big son of God, I seek not my own will. The one that angels are worshiping, I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father, which has said in chapter, eight, chapter 6, verse 38. Chapter 6, verse 38. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will. I came down from heaven not to do my own will. And you know, sometimes, uh, you know, it's so funny. Uh, it's a pathetic chill that sometimes you have a servant. A servant that comes to live with you in the house. That's the husband, that's the wife, these are the children. And it's the servant. And we're giving that servant uh, shelter, accommodation, and food. And we even try to send that servant to school like our children. And that uh, servant becomes so proud and so pompous and he's going to do his will. What he wants is what he wants. It's like now, it's the controller of the father, the mother, and the children of the whole house. And somebody needs to call him aside and say, my friend, you understand that this family is just helping you. You're not a son in the family. You're a servant. And as a servant, it's good to look up to your master and to look up to your mommy who is there, you know, taking care of you and not be self-willed. The people that come to the church like that, you know, the Lord is giving them grace and is helping them this way and the preacher is preaching to help them and the pastors are pastoring to help them and everybody is trying to do our best so that they can be comfortable, they can be happy, they can have everything the Lord wants them to have. We're praying for them. We're giving them the promises of God. All of it. So they want to do their own will. All of it. So is what they want that most time. Somebody needs to call them aside and say, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, he don't do like that. He always pleased the Father. And he said in verse 38 of chapter 6, For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. I pray God will touch our heart. I pray God will make us to live the way Christians sought to live in Jesus' name. We're looking at John chapter 12. John chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 49. John chapter 12, verse 49. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment that what, that what I should say and what I should speak. Look at Jesus Christ. He said, yes, I'm the Son of God. Yes, I'm the second personality in the Trinity. And yet, you understand, I come to do the will of my Father. You know, when there's pride in the heart, you can't say that. When there's hardness of heart, you can't say that. And when there's rigidity, you cannot say that. When it's like, you know, the training they gave you in college and training they gave you in school has overshadowed the doctrine and the teaching of the Word of God. You see, this is what it taught us in management school. This is what it taught us in professional school. And then you still do that. And it's in its contrary to the word of God. And you're not coming back to the word of God to say, here is the word of God. Jesus Christ is what this was based on the fact that he always did the will of the Father. Now you are there. I don't even know what the will of the Father is. You learn, you hear, you look at the word of God, but you are forgotten the will of God. But Jesus said, I've not spoken of myself, but the Father 
which sent me, he gave me a commandment what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, as even as the Father said unto me, so I speak, will be like that. That's why the Father testified concerning him, the Father will testify concerning you. I said the Father will testify concerning you. Look at Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. We're looking at verse 17. Matthew chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 17. It says in verse 17. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son. This is my beloved son. Tell me what follows there. In whom I am well pleased. In whom I am well pleased. When every dot of an eye, every cross of a cheek, every step you go, every bend of the corner, every action of your life, every signing of your receipt, every work you do in the office, everything you do in the market, everything you do with your husband, everything you do in the absence of your husband, everything you do with your wife, everything you do in the absence of your wife, everything you do in the presence of daddy and mommy, everything you do in the absence of daddy and mommy, everything you do according to the word of God, because that grace of God in you, then God will look at you and say, here is my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. And when God is well pleased you, if the rapture happens any time, thank God you are going. I say thank God you will make the rapture. Because it tells us, it tells us in, in the Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see this. And he was not found because God had translated him. And it says for before his translation, he had this testimony. What's the testimony? I say, what's the testimony? That he pleased God. I will please God. I said, you will please God. All the grace we need, all the strength we need, all the knowledge, all the light we need, so that in everything and in every area, we'll not take loss into our hands and just act anyhow and live anyhow and then just live as if we do not belong to Jesus and we will live according to the word of God and then Christ will say, I live in him. And everything he does, he does by my grace, he does by my knowledge, he does by the light I have given him and your light will keep on shining. And then you can say by the grace of God, I'm walking according to the will of God, and according to the faith and the faithfulness of the word, and I please the Lord. This is he, the only Savior. He is the way, is the, is the truth, is the life. This is he, he is the light, the light of the world, that lighteth every man that comes into the world. He is the door into heaven. He is the shepherd and the bishop of our souls. This is he, he is the teacher come from heaven. This is he, the gracious giver of eternal life. This is he, the power of God. This is he, is the strengthener for the believer and is the sustainer of the believer. The Father acknowledged him and said, This is my only begotten son, my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. The angels announced him, and the prophets prophesied for many generations and many centuries before he came. They prophesied about him. This is the Savior, this is the shepherd, this is the sanctifier. Why do you now? Because Jesus Christ has been fully revealed. Come back to John chapter 8. Come back to John chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 30. John chapter 8, verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. As he spake these words, many believed on him. The words he spake that time, he has spoken the same words today. And thank God there are believers in the house today. You will not turn away from him. You will not turn aside from him. And what do you do now, number one? You acknowledge him. You acknowledge him. He's the worthy one. He's the Lamb of God. He's the Savior. He's the Redeemer. He's a Sanctifier. He's the 
giver of all grace and knowledge him. Number two, believe him. Believe him. When he spoke the word to the people, even though the Jews were there, even though the Pharisees were there, the doctors were there, the scoffers were there, but these people decided, I'm going to believe. And believe, you believe tonight. Receive him. As many as received him to them, he gave hand to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, you acknowledge him, you believe him, you receive him, you confess him. Because he says, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my heavenly father. But if you confess him before men, then he will confess you. When you get, when you get on the other side, acknowledge him, believe him, receive him, confess him, obey him. Obey him. Whatsoever he says unto you, do. All that we have done today and has left us an example that we shall follow in his footsteps. You obey him. You live for him. And you follow him until the end. Follow him until the end. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The world behind him and the cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. Though my friends suppose, yet I will follow. No turning back. Back, no turning back because I'm following him until we get to heaven and I'm going to get to that heaven. You'll get to that heaven in Jesus' name. He was telling those people, he said, where go? you cannot go. But where he's going, that's where we're going. Where he is, that's where we will be. And we're going to be with him forever in Jesus' name. John chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 1. John chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 1. It says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house and many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go. He said he was going and he has gone now. He's going to prepare a place for you and for me. And we're going to be there in Jesus' name. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And when and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Our Lord is coming again. For those who are saved, it's coming again. For those who are sanctified, it's coming again. For those who are washed and purified and purged in the blood of the Lamb, it's coming again. It says, if I go, I will prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, that where I am, that where I am, they will be there also. I will be there. I said, I will be there. John chapter 17, verse 24. John chapter 17, verse 24. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. Those Pharisees will not be there. I will be there. Those scribes will not be there. I will be there. And those doubters and scoffers will not be there. I will be there. He prayed to the Father. When he prayed for sanctification, he said, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. We've seen the word of God today concerning the light. That is the liberating truth of Jesus Christ, the light. And the Lord is calling us to say, now we'll see the light. He shows us the way and he says, walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. I'll walk in the light. Where are you there? I'll walk in the light. The grace of God will be sufficient for your life. Your decision will be backed up by the Heavenly Father. And you'll stand firm. Whatever the world around you is doing, you will stand firm in the way of the Lord, in the word of the Lord. And you'll walk by His grace in the light, in His strength, in His power. You'll walk in the light in Jesus' name. We're going to rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer that He'll grant us grace. If you are not born again yet, this is the time to be born again. And it's very simple. You turn away from your sin and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ who died for you on the cross of Calvary. It says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you have found that you have not been walking in the light and you have been living a life that is just uh, habitually false, habitually wrong, and you want the grace of God in your life that you are saying, Oh Lord, I want to be in a new life, a new life, a new life. And I want to walk in the strength and the power of the Lord, walking in the light. And do you know what the Father wants me to do? Only do what the Father has taught me. Only do you know what will build up and honor the Father. You have a chance tonight to call upon the name of the Lord. He will answer your prayer. Once again, the gospel story has come.
come to you.